under Get to Go to the Footy for free. What about that? That's all games between round 16 and 19 of the 2023 Toyota AFL Premiership season. From selfies to screamers and tasty treats. Spectacular! Make it an awesome day for the family with a day out at the footy. Kids go free round 16 to 19. Boy, oh boy, wow, wee! Go to afl.com.au slash kidsmonth. Terms and conditions apply. Subject to capacity and availability. The passing of someone close places unique stress on family and friends. At this time, Farrell and O'Neill Funerals are here to provide reassurance and peace of mind. Farrell and O'Neill offer creative guidance and advice to tailor a service that best honours your loved one. Whether a large gathering or a small, intimate service, Farrell and O'Neill share their generations of experience in tailoring a unique and meaningful farewell. Proudly SA family owned and operated, because it's personal. Ahoy me hearties, it's Barnacle Bill's Bounty Pack! Sumptuous butterfish, prawns and calamari, spring rolls, chips and tartare sauce, and a 1.25 litre Coke, all for just $28. The Barnacle Bill Bounty Pack won't cause a mutiny in your budget. Sensational seafood on a 1.25 litre Coke. Heave ho into Barnacle Bill today for your Bounty Pack, for only $28. Ha <laughs> ha! Fresh from the sea, he's gotta be Barnacle Bill. A beautiful veranda perfectly matched to your home. Made tough from quality steel at Adelaide's best price. Bargain Steel Centre. We're manufacturers right here in Adelaide. So you buy direct and save. We'll come to you, measure up, then custom build and install. Large choice of colours and styles. Fully welded so it's stronger. And we'll even handle council approval. Your new veranda at Adelaide's best price or we'll beat it by 5%. Supplies of Colourbond Steel. Bargain Steel Centre. Dot com dot au. Four-wheel driving? If you want to get there, you want to be TJM equipped. TJM, Nailsworth in Clovelly Park. This is the 5AA Fishing Show. Presented by Ned McHenry. It is 28 minutes to 7. Good evening. Welcome to the 5AA Fishing Show. It is all thanks to TJM. Four-wheel driving and you need to get there. You need to be TJM equipped. You can head to Nailsworth in Clovelly Park to find them. Sam Tugwell, myself... And Ned McHenry. Ned, welcome to you. Hello, matey. Thank you for the welcome. Good to be here. It's always good to see you. It's I love a Tuesday you. night. Tuesday night. You do look forward to it? You I do. Good. Once upon a time, I wasn't as excited because what? I wasn't a fishing <laughs> person, but I've been converted in the last good, good, four to good. five months, so mate, I love this show. Tuesday nights are great, mate. I'll certainly look forward to it. It's good to recap the week. It's good to look forward into the week, what's exactly. happening, what's been biting. All the above. Let's get into it. Well, we are in the middle of winter right now. So have you had a chance to get out there, nice weather, and find a day to get out there and fish? Sammy, keyword being weather, what's the one thing I complain about on this show the mm, most, do you Mostly think? weather. Apart from government. Probably, probably, probably weather. the weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... Sammy, have we had a good run? What about the weekend weather was stunning? Cracker. Sunday was fantastic. Last week we had some really good fishable days. Mm -hmm. So, for the middle of winter, people have gotten out there and they've done really well. The fishing's been awesome. The reports yeah, have good. been coming in. Um, so, we'd love to hear from our audience if they have been out there catching mm. fish, Sammy, because we do have a good prize today. I've heard about this. So, you went squid fishing and so you've got a themed prize tonight. Yeah, so we talk about that dirty water versus clean water. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot more that goes into it, but basically the way I see it is dirty water and tide, you'll catch your whiting. Mm -hmm. uh, water with less flow and better water clarity, you'll catch your squid. Okay. So for me, earlier in the week on Monday, we had that dirty water and that meant the whiting fishing went really well. Sunday for me, the water cleared up a little bit and we did some squid fishing, which was sensational. So what I did bring in, Sammy... As you can see on the live stream. Yes, you can. Hold it up. five cracking Shimano jigs. Oh, beautiful. All in a range of sizes, as well as a little Shimano jig wallet. Oh, nice. To keep everything nice and organized. So You are an organized type. About 100 bucks worth of squidding value there, Sammy, that for a caller today on their hotspots. 822300. That's the number. We're here till 7 o'clock. Feel free to tell us your stories from the weekend or uh, recent time School if you've been holidays. able to get out there. Absolutely. It's been time to get out with the family, have a fish, or your friends, or whoever you can get out with. How successful? Successful were you on the week, by the way? Did really, really well. Bagged out on squid. So, yeah, they weren't too too hard to get. As I said, the water clarity was yep. good. We mixed up a few depths. We caught fish in shallow a little bit deeper too. The deeper squid, as we've spoken about on the show, get down on a Paternoster rig. So it's a little bit different to casting around in the shallow. Get those jigs down into your weed beds and you'll catch fish uh, in a little bit of deeper water. Not fish, cephalopods, squids. What, what do you like with squid? Because I don't hear you fishing for squid all that often. Yeah, no, I do like my squid, Sammy. I like getting squid for bait. I like eating it a little bit. Um... Yeah, they cop a bit of a knock, the squidly, Sammy. Mm. 
they cop a bit of a knock. It's a bit of a, they're, they're not the hardest fish to catch because they regenerate quite quickly. They've got a, a quick life cycle. There are a lot of them around, so they're yep. not the most difficult species to catch, but they're really good to eat. Yep. They're easy to catch. You can catch them off the, the jetty. They're an important fish. How do you make your squid when you, when you eat them? Oh, I'm not a very good cook, Sammy. No. Salt and pepper. Oh, you're salt not a good cook. Squid. Yeah, salt and pepper's great. What, do you like salt and pepper squid? I love it. It's all, it's a universal dish, salt and pepper squid. It is a little bit. You, can't you can go, go wrong. to every single restaurant and it has it. <laughs> it's always there. A it's Chinese a restaurant has it. An Australian <laughs> restaurant has it. Uh, who, who does the salt and pepper squid belong well, it's not to? Just salt and pepper and the fish and you're done. It's it is. pretty easy, isn't it? No, it's going really well. But well squid done. fishing, uh, the water clarity is the key, as we've said a couple of times, and the squid are around in good numbers. 8223 double O. Love to hear your fishing stories. As Ned said, it has been school holidays, so you might have been able to get out and about with the sun out over the week. Weekend, but we have a special guest to discuss more on the fishing front. We certainly do. School holidays is interesting, isn't it? You don't really mm. get school holidays when you work, do you? Nah, well, unless you have kids, you don't really know about school holidays. Oh, school holidays were good. Do you remember being in <laughs> yeah, year 10 were. and you look at your little calendar and you see yep. three weeks and you go, for those <laughs> two weeks, I'm just going to launch into as many activities as I can. Yep, it's the best time in the world. It doesn't really happen anymore with work, does it? No, nah, the world's your oyster in that school holiday period when you're a kid, but now it's, it just sort of goes to the wayside. Oh. Forget about it. Shane Mensforth from SA Angler is our guest. Shane, I'm sorry you had to listen to that rubbish. Let's talk fishing, mate. How are you going? <laughs> I'm very well, mate. How are you? We're very, very well. When was the last time you were on school holidays, mate? Oh, jeez. <laughs> a while back, I can't remember. I used to be a teacher once, mate. I used to love the holidays when I was a teacher and... Uh, uh, and, and sort of hate them all the, all the rest of the time. I've just become a parent, so. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done. Hey, you've got a good-looking bloke on your cover of SA Angler, this issue. Thoughts. Yeah, mate, we, we heard you work for free, so we thought we'd oh, just... Oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> Shane, how did he end up on the front? <laughs> oh. As I said, it costs us nothing. <laughs> <laughs> very well done. A good-looking bloke with a very big fish there, Sammy. Very nice. Shane, I want to talk to you about a few things, the first of them being your trip recently to Marion Bay. Mate, you had a cracking trip and caught a variety of species. Talk to us about that. Yeah, well, I haven't done anything with uh, eye fish for a little while, and Paul Wesley rang me up and said, come on, it's time to do something. Where, where should we go this time of year? And I thought, well, Marion Bay is always a safe bet. You've got plenty of fishing options there, so we... Travelled down there, uh, hooked up with uh, uh, Reef Encounters Charters, um, a, good, a really, really good young couple running that now. And we were very lucky with the weather. It wasn't perfect, but it was certainly uh, fishable. It would been a big boat. Look, we did really, really well on just about everything we tried for. Well, that's what you were saying to me. You did well on the tuna. You managed to catch some gummy sharks and school sharks as well as some Samson fish. Is that right? Yeah, look, we, we, we um, got on the, on the boat in Pondalari Bay, um, on the way out to Wedge, we ran into a school of bluefin. They're not big fish, you know, five, six, eight kilos, just little fellas, but yep. they're good fun and light tackle. We caught half a dozen of those and moved on and went to the other side of Wedge, um, managed to pot a couple of big samples, or good samples, 22, 23 kilo samples, nice fish, heaps of big nanny guy and other bits and pieces that go with that. And then the following day, we went uh, north up towards Fowl Bay and uh, got some big whiting, some mega gummy sharks up to, you know, 25 kilos. And just generally, everywhere we went, um, despite being a big moon, which wasn't ideal, uh, we did very well. We we're very lucky, and as uh, you go with a charter guy who knows where he's going, and that's half the battle. Makes a huge difference. You spoke about those whiting lastly. I want to talk about the whiting, because they've been fishing really well. The reports have been coming through the show um, of some really, really good, good kind of bag limit captures and good size fish. But an event is coming up, and it's the bloodworm run. Ooh. This is something unique to South Australia. I knew nothing about this until I moved over here. What's what's the go with the bloodworm run, Shane? Well, yeah, your bloodworms are, are sort of found around the country in various areas, but I don't know of anywhere else in South Australia, mate, where they come out of the of the seabed at a certain time according to the to the new moon, two or three days after the new moon, come to the surface, get caught on the run out tide, spawn, and die. I think it's unique to here. It's amazing. And uh, it's pretty amazing. You can get out there and, and catch up to, I think, uh, four litres by yourself. Or, or we can buy them from the tackle shops live or frozen. And they're just a gun bait for everything. Whiting, brim, school, mulloway, everything loves them. Obviously, because of the abundance of those worms in that run, it makes the whiting fishing difficult? It can do, yeah. Um, it's generally accepted that uh, the, the whiting, any, any fish that feeds on or near the bottom, just fills up with these worms as they, as they, they die and sink back to the seabed. And I've actually caught quite a few whiting around this time of the year where bloodworms, they gorged themselves so much they had bloodworms coming out of their mouth, but they still took pot bait. So you know what they're like, mate. If there's uh, anything available to eat, they're going to grab it. But uh, yeah, it can make it a little bit more difficult. They've got plenty of natural food to feed on, so 
you've really got to be on the on your, on your game to catch them. Absolutely, mate. And outside of that charter trip you did in Marion Bay, have you done any fishing? How are the whiting going out your way? Well, they're going pretty well. I, look, I, I, this time of year, like a lot of people, and I think yourself included, I, uh, I, I love to catch squid. Um, squid, uh, you know, it's, it's no brain, <laughs> no no brainer fishing. Yep. You can put it that way. You don't need sophisticated equipment. You can fish in close. It doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. And mate, the, the squidding over my way on your peninsula at the moment is just not the plan up, Jim. We spent, uh, I think, an hour out there the other day, and it got our thirty two of us. It got our thirty, and they, not monsters, but you know, medium sized squid, and they just you know throw out a jig, pick it twice, and you go, you're on. I, I love that sort of stuff. Not all the time, but I love them to eat, and they're good fun to catch. Mate, well said. We've actually got a prize pack here. We've got five Shimano squid jigs and a Shimano jig wallet to keep all your jigs organised. The squid fishing, yep. does it cop a bit of a knock? Oh, I'm the same, mate. It's a great form of fishing, and it keeps that fishing wheel circuit, circling because you use your squid for bait. You can It catches everything. I mean, everything loves squid. A tenderised squid strip for a whiting or a snapper when we can, of course, catch them. It's, it's a staple of the fishing kind of circle, isn't it? It is, you know, and we're pretty lucky here, us Victoria, Tasmania, we've, we've got some of the best squid fishing in the country, and, and it's so accessible, that's what I love about it. Kids can, in, down, the, down the jetty can catch them, out in your tinny, as long as you've got clear water, as you've been saying a little bit earlier, uh, and reasonable conditions, a bit of tide and decent jig, you know, it's, it's, it's no-brain fishing, that's what I like to call it, and that's, I just love it. I, just, I really do. No brain fishing, Shane. You're being a little bit hard on yourself. I've seen some. <laughs> I've seen some of your work, mate. I reckon you've got a reasonable size thing in that noggin of yours. Oh uh, yeah. Look, every now and again, mate, it's just good to disengage the the brain a little bit, get into a routine, cast, catch squid, and I have to think too much about it. But, you know, they're fairly easy, to, easy to clean, easy to store, easy to cook, and great to eat. So. Yeah, I just love catching them. Whenever they're there, I'm going to have a crack at a squid for sure. Well done, mate. A form of mindfulness. Well said. I feel the same. Shane, our guest from SA Angler, of course you can go and pick up an issue in any kind of news agency or tackle store, can't you, Shane? And you can see my big fat head on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, you can, mate. Look, that's a great fish. 107 kilo bluefin is, is a cover worthy fish anywhere in the world, mate, and that's a good fish. And we'd just like to be on hand at the right time to take your picture and and put on the cover, and from what I can see so far, it's selling particularly well. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Has <laughs> yeah. sales decreased or have they increased? <laughs> no, it, 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 no it's, it's flying off the shelves, mate, which is pretty encouraging. We're always happy to hear that. Very good, very good. Of course, love SA Angler and love mm -hmm. what you guys do. Shane, thank you for joining us, mate. Chat to you soon. Yeah, cheers, Dad. Bye. How about that? Shane Mintzforth there from SA Angler Magazine. Hang on, we cannot move past this. So, <laughs> so how in the world have you ended up, give us the truth, how have you ended up on the front cover? Is this, did you put this forward to Shane or what's the no, go? No, 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 Sammy. What's going I don't on? go to Shane. Shane comes to me, okay. Does There's a currency with that photo. Now, well, what happened was he was down at Port McDonald the same time I was last time, ended up catching a few barrels that day and got that, that bigger fish that we ended up uh, photographing. I think it was 107 bigger kilo than or you. something. It's massive. It was a big fish, but it was a good shot. And as I said, somehow ended up on that uh, on that mag. I've seen that photo <laughs> now everywhere. It's on Channel 7. It's on the front page of a mag. You, mate, you're just doing all the social media sort of pushing of this, aren't you? You oh, just sort of look at how good I am. I think I need to just maybe settle down just a little bit and stay in my lane. Bit. No, you've done very well for yourself. If you catch a fish that big, you might as well flaunt it. Exactly. It's Stuff you, Sammy. 17 minutes to 7. We'll get some of your hot spots around South Australia on the other side. The Art Gallery of South Australia is excited to present an Australian Australian exclusive, Frida and Diego, Love and Revolution. This exhibition will feature the iconic works of two of the most influential and loved artists of the 20th century, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera. Today, both are worshipped globally for their fusion of traditional Mexican folk art and international modernism. For tickets and more information, visit agsa.sa.gov.au. Proudly supported by 1395, Adelaide's 5AA. Boy, do I love my boat. And gee, I saved hundreds on a new anchor winch. Which winch, honey? Mix winch. Oh, and who found Mix winch? Uh, you did, honey. Who looked up Mix winch online? Well, you did, honey. And who called Mix winch? Uh, you did, honey. So who saved hundreds on a Mix winch? OK, OK. We saved hundreds on a Mix winch, and you can too. Visit mixwinch.com.au or call 0422 339350 today. Which winch, honey? Mix winch. Did you know that ancient Romans considered a large, noisy funeral to be a symbol of wealth? At Simplicity Funerals, we believe a funeral needn't cost the earth to mean the world. 
it pays to keep things simple. Simplicityfunerals.com.au Get a read on the greatest tournament in women's sport, the FIFA World Cup, with our special eight-page lift-out, featuring an exclusive interview with Matilda's young gun Mary Fowler, plus the Matilda's path to glory and full match draw. Don't miss it, only in tomorrow's advertiser. Join the Ned's Racing Open Group to connect, bet and banter with thousands of like-minded punters and see expert tips every day on all three racing codes. Take it to the Ned's level. T's and C's apply. See website for details. What are you really gambling with? Introducing the 2023 World Performance Car of the Year. The Kia EV6 GT. 430 kilowatts of power and 740 newton metres of torque. With its unique Australian-tuned GT suspension and steering, the Kia EV6 exceeds all expectations. The Kia EV6 GT. The most powerful Kia ever built. Kia. Movement that inspires. Have your say with For My Say. Do you believe Australia should become a republic? And if so, should the electorate choose the president? Download the For My Say app today to answer this question at 8.30am tomorrow. That's number four, My Say. The power is in you. You want to shut out the wind and rain in winter or the sun flies and mozzies in summer, but you don't want to sacrifice your view. Then you need Phantom Screens. For protection from sun, wind and rain all year round, Phantom's SA-made outdoor motorised blinds can span up to 12 metres wide. They offer effortless automation. A blind that's there one minute and gone the next. From the hills to the coast and everywhere in between, choose Phantom Screens. Get inspired online at phantomscreens.com.au Speak with one solution and they'll tell you cybercrime is not a big business problem, a government problem or a small enterprise problem. It's everyone's problem. Ransomware, malware and adware remain the number one threat. One call to one solution will put your business in a safe place. It's the smartest, most cost-effective business decision you'll ever make. Get in touch with One Solution, winner of the National Telstra Customer Experience Award. OneSolution.net.au Four-wheel driving? If you want to get there, you want to be TJM equipped. TJM, Nailsworth in Clovelly Park. This is the 5AA Fishing Show, presented by Ned McHenry. It is 13 minutes to 7, John Blake to follow after 7, Leith Forest at 8 o'clock tonight. Of course, it's the fishing show. Thanks to TJM, Ned. We were just chatting off air. <laughs> we uh, you've got absolutely no idea about this, right? Yeah. We were talking about the salt and pepper squid. Now, yeah. what you do with your squid to tenderise it, Sammy, is you sit it in milk. And I was what? talking to you about that, and yeah. you had absolutely no idea. Yeah. You'd never heard that. Yep. And salt and pepper squid, actually, a mate just messaged me. He goes, salt and pepper squid is not from China, you idiot. A text just <laughs> pop up on my thing. <laughs> They'll remain nameless. Anyway. But, Sammy, that's a, that's a little Ned's tip without even a Ned's tip. It is. If Which, you want to tenderise so your milk, squid... Though? I don't understand. Well, I don't know. Is that? Have you never heard about that? No, so I haven't. Does milk tenderise everything or just squid? I'm not sure. I'm not. Uh, look, that's probably a, 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 a what are you, <laughs> kitchen wives sort of tale. I don't know what they'd call that. But I've never heard it. It's a bit like the bananas on the boat. No one quite understands this. No, mate. What you but do, there's clearly a backstory. What you do with your squidlies is if you've got your big squid, right, which are often a little bit firmer when you go to cook, if you do set them in milk and let them stay there, it'll actually tenderise that squid milk. How long do you keep it in there for? Uh, overnight. overnight. I've got to be completely honest. I don't do it all the time, but yeah. it certainly is a squid cooking hack. Right. Has anyone ever heard of that? Oh, this is absolutely right. I've heard heaps of people that do Gee, it. Gee, fishing hacks or, 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 or cooking hacks with your seafood. And that's we're not Give even at call. Ned's. We're not even at Ned's tips. This uh, is bizarre. Segment. <laughs> this is some sort of radio. This. So I'm not quite sure about tenderising seafood in milk. Could you do it with any fish? Or just is no, it just you cal- can't be sitting your fish in milk? I wouldn't have thought you just have with squid. I know this is why you were <laughs> so laughing at bizarre. me off there, going, "What the heck is wrong with you?" <laughs> John Blake's looking over your shoulder, and this like, is always you stay a problem. Out of this, mate. this is a problem because this will be behind closed doors on Friday, <laughs> so we're going to be in trouble here. But nonetheless, if you've got some sort of seafood fishing tip or trick, eight double two three double o double o, because I'd love to hear it. We've got your uh, squid prize to give away, little jags, and the case. But I, I'm not, I've never seen this. Here we go. Someone's texting saying freezing squid tenderises it. There's another way. Right. Well, it doesn't tenderise it till you defrost it yeah, after. I'd imagine it'll be true. pretty hard when it's in the freezer. <laughs> no, good point. Right. Well, I do freeze my bait when I go, sorry, freeze my squid when I go to use it as bait. Yeah. Has anyone else heard about this hack sitting it in milk? And is there anything else that you sit in milk mm. 
to tenderise. It's absolutely a thing, Sammy. Wow, You're okay. looking at me as if I'm an absolute duffer. You could be the only one in Adelaide that does this. Mate, I promise you, it's a full <laughs> thing. Eight double two three double o double o. Feel free to give us a buzz. We've got the prize, 100 bucks worth to give away uh, next time you go fishing. Let's do our hot spots, though. Thanks to Tackle World Adelaide Metro. They've got the best range price service guaranteed. Go to Allenby Gardens or online at tackleworldadelaide.com.au. Nettie's Fishing Hotspots. I'm sorry, worried about John Blake. So worried. <laughs> He's just over there. That is just content to him. Yeah, it is. Anything that gets said, he would oh, just be thinking, dear. how do I make this into something? Oh, he's giggling too. It oh, means it's God. over. I'm We're doomed. I'm scared of that bloke. <laughs> he absolutely hit me for six with that behind closed doors. I've never been the same since. <laughs> what do you got on the waters for us? Can he hear me or not, Blake? He's yeah, he can. Yeah, laughing. he's listening to us. Oh, good man. Intently. No, Here we go. Hang on. Yes, hang on. I can. <laughs> there he is. The voice he is of trouble. God he is trouble. Above. I think if you knock a tooth out too, you're supposed to put it in milk and take it to the doctor. Get or if you chop a finger off while you're chopping the fire, when you put the finger in milk, it's got to be good for you. Cats yeah. drink it. There's got to be some kind of substance. Well, in it, it certainly tenderises the chopped off finger. Hang on, here we go. Andrew's at West Lakes. So he might have a solution for us. How are you, Andrew? Hi, fellas. Uh, just a couple of things first, Ned, if you don't mind. Absolutely, mate, Andrew. Uh, I went down to Brighton Jetty on last Friday morning. Oh, well done. And the water was pretty dirty, and I got nothing. Yep. Is there, I was using a combination of jigs and heaven knows what else, and it was just nothing was going. Is there anything that you could recommend? The one thing I would say, Andrew, when the water is a little bit dirtier, is you can use a flesh bait. So something like a Tommy or a silver whiting, putting it on a spike jig, it's just got a little bit of scent. But the problem is with squid is they are super reliant on their eyesight for hunting. And that's why the dirty water makes it really difficult. So you would have found, obviously, that day, Andrew, um, it would have been a bit tougher. That might have been a day to maybe do a little bit more whiting fishing, but it is obviously tough off the pier. Do you go down to Brighton a fair bit or...? Yeah, yeah, that's my regular spot. Yeah, no, well done. Mate, Brighton Jetty, as you would know, is a super productive pier and jetty for squid fishing, but when that water's dirty, it can make it a little bit tricky. Hopefully you get some clearer water mm. across these next couple of weeks, mate, and you can get into a few. Agree. Let's go to Rebecca at Everfall Park. I reckon she's got something for us on the milk. How are you, Beck? Hi, I'm good. I'm just ringing about the squid in milk. All right. And it's true. And you put it in for no longer than 20 minutes. Oh, Beck, you've been so going only all night. 20 minutes. I've been overnighting. <laughs> I've been sleeping over. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might toughen up the squid then. But yeah, I heard about this, um, oh, this is years ago. Uh, some kind of chef was saying, yeah, you put it in for no longer than 20 minutes and that will tenderize the squid. Have you tried it before, Rebecca? I don't not do it now. Oh, it's essential. Beck, do you mind just... Sam on the keys over there, do you mind just asking him to apologise? He was oh, calling me an spell. absolute doofus in that break. <laughs> well, I think you should apologise. Yes, Beck, right, thank Beck. you on I my side. I apologise. I thought it was a wives' tale. I didn't think it would quite be true. Be Beck's but... all over it. Only 20 minutes, she says, and she's got tender squid every time, Sammy, so all not right. too bad. Shandell at Salisbury Plains. Squid, what's on your mind? Hi, Nettie. How are you? Good to hear from you again, Shandell. I reckon you had that um, you had that blue with your husband out brim fishing, didn't you? <gasps> no, we got stuck in that yeah um yeah in the port. port Shandell, there, I'll never forget that story. <laughs> Anyone who wants to go back and listen to our podcast, that is an absolute cracker. Shandell, what about squid this time? What have you got for us? Um, we, I absolutely, I agree. We tenderise it in milk, but also here's another one for you. If you scoop out the inside of a kiwi fruit <gasps> and squash it I've heard and this mush too. it all up, you can put it in there and um, that tenderises it as well. What? What is it about? Jeremy kiwi sent the fruit. same text in squeeze kiwi fruit into the milk. What in the world? Yeah. What's the kiwi fruit do uh, kiwi fruit doing, Shandell and Jeremy? I've got no idea, but it works. Trust me, because hubby's um, me. always catching squid. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, This mate. is some We're sort learning of... More. This is a cooking show now. Oh, now, see, I'm happy I held strong. I got a little bit nervous when you <laughs> looked at me like that. Jenny at West Lakes, do you put your squid in milk? No. All right. Jenny, what do you do? I have tried many, many things because my husband's a rabid squid catcher. Yep, yep. So I've tried everything. Okay, so you have squid, you have an egg, you have garlic, and you have soy sauce. Oh, oh, soy nice. sauce, and Jenny. you leave it for about an hour. Mm. And then you put flour, corn flour, salt and pepper, five spice powder. Oh, Jenny, stop it. I'm salivating. You I'm like a Labrador at this moment. You take the marinade, you flour it, shake off excess flour, fry it in hot oil, and it's a winner. 
Well, it sounds like a winner. Does Jenny... it come out brown, the um, squid? Sorry? It does? Yeah. There you go. No, yeah, Sammy was asking, does it oh, come does it out come nice out? and brown? I thought you said true. Sorry. Oh, well, if you cook it, if you overcook it, yes, it would. Oh. <laughs> but if you just fry it off, you can take it out when it's brown enough for you. Jenny, do you ever invite visitors over for dinner ever, or do you ever have a little bit extra that maybe I could come over Aww. and have a little bit of a taste a of, Jenny? I'm a reluctant cook. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're pretty good I mean, at it, I Jenny. I love cooking, but for my family. Oh, just okay. for my family. Well, I'm not family, so I guess I'll just go and I'll have takeaway <laughs> then, Jenny. Thanks for that. Thank Thanks you, for Jenny. Support. Appreciate your calls. Everyone's, it, someone else has sent in a text saying kiwi fruit and papaya tenderizes meat papaya. and squid. So it's not like it's uh, unusual for a lot of our listeners. So there you go. Oh, we are learning about... Me. All right, next time you catch squid, there's your challenge. Jamie, it's the acidity of the milk that does the work. Acidity? Is there acidity in milk? Uh, I wouldn't, well, I suppose there is. Isn't there acidity? Acidity is more vinegar and stuff. Yeah, but I, there must be a little bit of milk. Okay. Oh, look, we don't know. Jamie, if you are listening, call up. I don't think there's any acidity in milk, is there? <laughs> Do we have time for... I think we've only got time for a tip because we're just about out of All time. All right, hang so. on, hang on. And we, I'm going to get that prize out to one of our callers too. We All love right. our Can you give us your absolute best audience. hotspot? No, no, I feel I'm, like we've ripped them off. I'm going quick, Sammy, please. Um... All right, water clarity has improved. We've spoken about yep. the squid. They're everywhere, Metro, Yorks, fishing really, really well. So get yep. your jigs organised. The whiting have been great because we had good tides and we had dirty water. Um, mullies and brim locally. When I say mullies, mull away. Yep. Always got to be cautious of the mm -hmm. nickname, Sammy. Uh, in the upper reaches of the Onkaparinka. Yorks, let me just name some destinations. Let me throw these out. Here we go. Port Victoria, Balgoan, Port Hughes, Point Turton, Wallaroo. They are all Mecca's they fishing are. locations for whiting. Summit. Huge. And I know we've spoken about whiting a lot. We've spoken about the squid too. But seriously, these winter whiting are going really well, especially on Yorks. It's world-class fishing. It truly is some of the best whiting fishing in the world. Out west, spoke to a charter operator, Dan, from GT Fishing Charters. He headed out wide. The school sharks are good there. The nannies are fishing well offshore. Uh, the nana guy I speak of. And inside Per Point Sir Isaacs. They got a big bag limit of whiting, so 60 whiting in through there in, in some shallower water. All right, so, we've got about 30 seconds for a tip. Nettie's Fishing Tip of the Week. Let's go. Outside of milk and kiwi fruit, Sammy, another <laughs> tip for you. If you're a fisho and you're serious about your fishing, yep. you need to download the Navionics app. Navionics. It is a must-have. Right. Right. And the reason I say that is because it shows you all your contour lines, all your mapping, you can see the reef systems, and, and it's without a sonar. So you can be sitting at home on your lounge room and, and looking at likely fishing points. You can zoom in and see, look, those contour lines are all very close together. So what that would be is sudden changes of depth, which would mean reef, it would mean structure, and that's where habitat of fish are, Sammy. You can see uh, where the islands are. You can see how long your commutes are. It is just an absolutely gold app for all keen boaties or all keen fishermen. You should not have it. You should not not have it, Sammy. Not not have it. What's the name again? Navionics. Excellent. Have that written down. Navionics sure boating app, Sammy. Please. If you love your fishing and boating, it is a cracker. You haven't missed so far on all your tips this year, so do yourself a favour. Tomorrow night this time, so 6.30 to 7, yes. Charlie Dixon, so ah. an oppo player of yours that you match up every now and then, he has got his own show tomorrow night after the sports show, Driving with, Driving Dixon. with Dixon. It'll debut, so Good make sure you're tuning in 6.30 to 7. It'll be well worth the listen. He's taking after your footsteps. You're leading the way. You're the pioneer in this space. <laughs> Football is doing radio shows on AA. I think he'll be very, very good at that. I've seen a lot of his car stuff, and he's a very impressive guy. He in front certainly of the camera, is. So I'm sure he'll be good in here. All too. right. Look forward to hearing you on Behind Closed Doors on Friday, and I'll see you next Blakey, Tuesday. no. No. <laughs> be listening to the 5AA Interactive Lounge this Thursday with Graham Goodings. Representatives from Orion Care will be talking about their beautiful new purpose-built supported